So you're fancying a bit of that off-road riding stuff. Well, unfortunately, most of the time, it's not just a case of saying, well, look, you know, there's a mountain over there. Let's just go and ride up it. In most cases, a little bit more to it than that. So stick around. I've got five tips for you to get you safely on the right trails as quickly as possible. So stick around. you've bought an adventure bike a dual sports or an enduro bike and in your mind you want to go out there and do some off-road riding well firstly great job because actually riding off-road is some of the most fun motorcycling that you can do but finding the right legal trails can be a bit of a challenge and literally new terrain so the point in this video to get you on the right track from our own personal experience um, they're probably not the nth degree in terms of expertise and don't go into the fine minutia, but they're going to get you on the right track as quickly as possible and in simple man's terms as well. So this video applies directly to the UK, but the principles I'm going to be talking about can be transferred to most countries and their legal route systems. So the first point is aim to find legal trails. Now in the interest of keeping motorcycle riding and trail riding and you know just the whole sport of motorcycling to have as good a reputation as humanly possible it's really really important that we respect the the laws we respect uh, the you know the country's guidelines in regards to doing this and also the other trail users that are on these type of trails you know so let, let's respect walkers let's respect uh, mountain bikers all that kind of stuff and, you know, as much fun as it would be to literally tear us around every bit of terrain that we can see, you know, whether that's beautiful mountains or massive landscapes or beaches, I mean, that would be so much fun. The problem is in the medium to long term, you know, misusing terrain on motorcycles, just you, you just see an erosion basically of your rights and um, reputation basically with all the other members of public really important that we protect that as much as possible so find the right legal trails respect them look after them you know treat other trail users with as much courtesy as you can muster and you know do all those things and i guarantee you that we'll have lots of time and lots of hours of massive amounts of enjoyment basically for as long as possible so the second point is join a local club now when we were first looking to find the right trails you know, we did quite a lot of desk research, so we spent um, quite a lot of time on Google, you know, Googling where we should go. And actually, we really, really struggled to find the right information. We came across bywaymap.com, um, but actually not all of the trails were on there, and I guarantee you that they're not as well. Um, then somebody else said about the TransEuro Trail. Um, which we checked out and we followed the route of that but then actually found that a lot of the trails that is used on that particular one they're quite tame and we wanted a little stuff a little bit more rougher anyway basically there's not the f sort of free information around it's not like a map you know you've got to delve a little bit uh, deeper than that and that's where local riding clubs come in so basically wherever you live whether that's in the UK whether that's in America or anywhere in the world there will be similar guys and similar with similar interests in your area that have actually they've, they've got the experience they've done the hard work they've learned it from somebody else and we need to sort of like get you into a group um, where there's a knowledge base already so in our case we joined the trf in england and uh, more specifically the trf group in cumbria um, you know, basically, when, once we'd signed up, we got let onto the Facebook group, which is a closed group, by the way. Um, and, you know, it's via this group that actually we've learned uh, probably the majority of the things about the local trails to us is via this group. You know, and whether that's sort of where to ride or whether that's, 
you know, people just uploading pictures every day of where they're riding and giving you inspiration. And then you can, you know, talk to people on there. Where do you ride? You know, perhaps you want to go out together. Actually, via this group, um, they're putting on quite a lot of regular uh, local rides as well that you can join into. It's a massive resource um, and there's a huge pool of information and knowledge that you're kind of tapping into by joining a local rider group. Really highly recommend it. And as well, these guys are directly involved in looking after the trails as well. So the TRF, um, certainly our Cumbria group, does quite a lot of work in you know, physically maintaining the tracks and keeping the reputation of the type of riding that we're doing as high as it possibly can be. And on this subject as well, and probably one of the main reasons why there's not a huge amount of um, you know, trail riding information available on the open you know, internet, is that the guys who have the knowledge base that are on these sort of closed groups, you know, they don't, you know, they're quite protective over it. They don't just want every Joe turning up with a WR450F, tearing the absolute crap out of the trails, cheesing all the walkers off, che you know, running over dogs and all that kind of stuff. You know, they really want to protect their trails, they want to protect their riding and the community that they're in as well. So that's probably why some of the information isn't out there on the open, um, you know, internet. These guys are protective about what they're doing. And finally, joining a group like this is going to tell you everything that you're not ever going to be able to know, you know, via traditional methods, you know, just riding around or, or Googling or something like that. So, you know, obviously we have a bunch of like official trails, but a group like this, you don't know, but they might have a, an agreement with a local farmer or a local landowner. Perhaps they're going to put a special trial on or something like that that's kind of exclusive to this group so it's all the stuff that you're going to find out that you wouldn't be able to without a group like this so that that's tip number two and it's a really really important one point number three is research your ride now the last thing you want to be doing and i guarantee you this this, this is the last thing you want to be doing is turning up to a trail that you've checked out on them on a flat bit of paper a flat map and you're going to turn up on that trail with like a quarter of a ton adventure bike and find that you get stuck in the middle of nowhere because the trail, we well, haven't researched it properly. The trail is too aggressive or it's too muddy or it's too whatever and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So research your right. I'm going to put you in on screen for a second and I'm going to show you how uh, typically I'll research a, a trail I'm going to do. So I found the right uh, trail map. Basically, I'm going to pull that up on the screen uh, right now. So we can see I've got a part of the Lake District on the map and you know there's some trails here um, and obviously there's there's a various sort of like code um, you know between green, amber and red. Now for example, um, and I know this because I've already done this one, there's a particular trail here called U5051 that I fancy the look of. Um, and basically I want to find out what it's like it's about an hour's drive from where we live so if I'm going to drive all the way there I want to sort of do my research what it looks like and you know whether I'm going to be particularly able to ride it on a certain bike at that time actually we had the um, 790 Adventure R from KTM so it's a, an adventure bike it's best part of 200 kilos so I, I did want to do my research prior to it so look in here then I've got um, I can see the kind of landmark areas is going to be High Nibthwaite or this Parker Moor. So actually what I can do is go into YouTube just for example and go Park um, Moor, uh, Green Lane for example or Enduro. Let me try and Parker Moor Enduro because that's just bringing up Land Rover stuff. So, where are we at? Oh, here we go. So this guy is doing it right now, Taff Davies. And we're gonna have a look at the trail and see what we think. So this, all of this stuff is fine. Oh, this looks rough here. 
all right, this is rough. And I know what type of bike he's on. He's on, a, he's on an FE 350 or something like that, Hosfana. This is rough as a Badger's back end. And you know what? From this research um, that I've just seen, and he's got a mate with him who stopped uh, right there on a, on, on a KTM. And I'm gonna scrub in advance a little bit more. But almost by this point, I've kind of seen enough here, really. I know enough now to know that, oh, and he's just stacked it. There you go. <sighs> Unfortunately, Taft Davies, he's got a mate with him and, uh, you know, he's got a light enough bike. But look, the point of the matter is, um, that basically from the research I've done on the desk I know now in in terms of my own ability and stuff like that I don't want to take the 790 Adventure R up that trail because in my opinion it's too rough for that bike so I've done my research and I thought do you know what I need to find another trail right now um, you know but actually because I've done that research then when we've got a more suitable bike, so we actually came back and we had the uh, TE uh, 250 and 150i. I looked at that and I thought, hey, you know, I fancy a bit of that. Um, so actually we did go and ride that trail again on them and I'll put that in for you as well. But, you know, the desk research element is so, so, so important um, because it's just going to mean that you're as prepared as you can be actually. So point four is have your expectations in mind and try to be with somebody. So look, have your expectations in mind with regards to the type of motorcycle that you've got. And honestly, in my own personal opinion, and I have done a bit of this over the, over the past year or so, um, you know, I wouldn't be going out riding trails on my own with a bike that's sort of about over 150 kilos, which is why the 701 Enduro is kind of, it's about there, but it's, it's borderline. Anything over that, just don't bother on your own. It's, it's too heavy and too dangerous. And ideally try and be with someone all the time. When you have a, 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 a bigger bike, a, an adventure bike, for example, that's fine and they ride off road, no problems. But, you know, when it does go wrong, and it does go wrong from time to time, you know, picking one of these bikes up in slippy terrain, you know, if it falls down the wrong side of uh, a slope and you've got to pick it up against the camber of the, the slope and you're on slippy terrain, it can be really difficult. And actually, you know, if you're not careful, perhaps you're stuck under it and there's nobody else around. It's not like a road where there's traffic coming all the time. You know, these trails can be quite remote and, you know, you could just get stuck up there, you know, and something like that is going to turn you from sort of brave adventure rider into an absolute naive idiot in about 10 seconds flat. And honestly, it's just not worth it. So try and ride with somebody if you can, especially if you've got a heavier bike or an adventure bike or something like that. Try and ride with somebody. You know, it's way more fun anyway off-road if you can share the enjoyment with somebody. It gives you more confidence. You can try new things that you haven't tried before because just having that extra person just gives you that extra bit of confidence. And of course, whatever bike you're on, whether you're on a lightweight enduro or a, a, a dual sport or a heavier bike, you know, it's just going to give you that much more safety when you're on your own. And the fifth point is just get out there and do it. You know, whether you've got a barn find uh, two-stroke enduro bike that's absolutely knackered or whether you've got the latest and greatest 20 grand GS adventure whatever you've got just get out there and enjoy it get yourself geared up get yourself research find the right trails do all the research join a club if you can but you know get you get yourself protected get your get your Nox protection on get the right gear that you need go with somebody and just get out there and enjoy it and I'm telling you it is so much fun so I really hope that you found that helpful. Please like, please comment. I actually love to hear what you think. And actually, if you've got any tips that you would like to add, please put them in the comment section as well. I'm sure they're gonna be really useful for everybody watching. 
Um, all the gear that we use to protect ourselves when we're on the trails, I'm going to put in the description um, so you can check out all the products that we use. And finally, please subscribe to the channel too. And we'll see you next time.